Hello and welcome to QED Stator 1. This series of short videos will illustrate each step of the course, so you can either follow one by one or you can just refer to them if you get stuck. Either way, I hope you'll find them useful. Because it's a practical module, you'll need several things to follow the course. You'll need these instructions, you can see here, QED Stator 1, and then as we go, you'll need various data files which were introduced in the instructions. And of course, you'll also need Stator itself. If you have not managed to install Stator or you don't have it, please refer to the instructions in the other video or perhaps get in touch with uh, Rob or Paul, we can give you some directions. So let's first of all open up Stator and you should find yourself looking at something that a bit like this. So here's Stator on my computer. Um, if you compare this with the instructions that I've got, you'll see in the instructions, there's a bit more in there because I was doing some initial processing so you can see something happening, but the various windows are laid out here and it describes what each window is at the bottom here. So I'm not going to go through these again in the video, except to point out that, okay, it does look a bit confusing, but you get used to it as you go along. The main things to start with are, here are the results, or the things that the stator does. And this little area down here is where we do most of the work. So we type most stuff into here uh, when we're working in this screen. We don't tend to use the menu instructions very much apart from opening and closing files. So this is where you'll do most of the work. So let's get started with this. Refer to the first thing here. Oh, yes, I should also point out that as it's a practical course, it's important that you try to follow this through instead of just reading and listening. So there are things to do in Stata, which I've marked as S, and there are also some questions, Q. So you should be able to answer these questions as you go through it. So if you don't, you might like to maybe ask in the next uh, live session or think about it, ask friends. But do try and satisfy yourself, you can answer those questions. So if you get going then, okay, well, Stata does like to have lots of windows and more and more pop up as you use it. It can be confusing at first. So, so here's the first thing, S1. The first thing to do is to type browse into the command window and press enter. So that's what we're gonna do. Here's the command window, type browse. Note that that will not work because I have done um, a big B. State it is quite um, case sensitive, it means that you have to have the right letters, big letters or small letters. So you type that in and press enter. And nothing at all happens because on my computer it's popped up on my other screen, so I'll try and drag it back. This pops up. So here's the data browser. And you'll see here that um, it looks a bit like an Excel spreadsheet. Here's where the data goes. So if we just, as it says in the instructions, try to type some data in. So I'm putting some stuff there. As you see, nothing is happening. I cannot enter any data in this view in Stata. So that seems quite confusing. Um, but, so I've done S1 and S2, tried typing in a few numbers, nothing much is happening. As it says here, that's intentional. It's meant to stop you typing things in in that window. So question one, think to yourself, why do you think Stata has designed it? So there's a window here where you can't type anything into it, all you can do is look. So think about that. Next thing to do then is S3. You're gonna close the window, click back in the command, and then type in edit. See what happens this time, and try to type some numbers in. So I'll close that browser, go back to Stata, and this time I type edit. By the way, notice that um, the history window is now working. There's the browser I did before. There's edit, add it to it, and it brings up this window. So here's the edit window. This time I should be able to type a few numbers in, hopefully. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, simply can. Um, and Maybe another column I might like a few words, things, etc. Okay. So you can type some numbers, some words in. Um, you might notice that the numbers are colored black and the words are colored red. I didn't do that, it's automatic. So you should see that that happens. So you can type stuff in the editor window and think about what similarities and differences are there. So have a look at this. It kind of looks like Excel, other spreadsheets, but there are some differences. Okay, so entering data, you can type stuff in. Sometimes you can, maybe if you've done some interviews with people, you're typing it straight in. Usually though, there are better ways of even doing that. 
Um, but certainly, if you're working with secondary data, usually you're downloading sets of data. In the next section, when we really get started, I'll show you how you input um, an existing set of data. Um, but for now, we'll just, uh, before we do that, we'll clear everything. So S5, in the editor window, type clear all and press enter. Note that after a while, these instructions stop saying, put it in the command window and press enter. It just says, enter that command or type that command. So we assume you know, like, rather than typing heads all the time, remember to do that. So clear all. So that zapped all the data. If you did do browse, then you'd find there's nothing there. See that all the items have been cleared from the variable list. While I'm here, I could show you one use of the history list is, this is the previous things we've done. Um, if I want to do a quick browse to have a look at the data, all I do is click on that browse and it comes in the command window again, and then you press return. <laughs> yes. So it's gone to browser mode. See all the data has gone. Okay, so we've cleared everything. So we've cleared everything, nothing in memory. Now we're ready to move on to the next stage, which is to load in a data file and uh, carry on with some initial analysis. Well, I'll cover that in the next video. So for now, welcome again and thanks for watching.